Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Hello, everybody. Oh, let's get rid of that. Echo's gone. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot to turn that uh, mic off. I hope everybody can hear me fine. But um, so I put up my uh, contact information in each, each show. Um, you know, mail can go to Bill Donahue at 310-31805 Temecula Parkway, number 218, Temecula, California, 92592. I enjoy the cards and letters that come in there. Regular email, uh, bill at discerningtruth.com works well. And then questions for the Profit Club, uh, or as Michael and I call ourselves the Profit Club Clowns, go to profitclubclowns at gmail.com. And then any time I create slides that have scripture verses or references, I always post a PDF of those slides up on uh, uh, Discerning Truth Group on Telegram. And yeah, I, I see the congratulations in the chat for the uh, 100th episodes. Thank you very much for that. And uh, we'll move on from here. Um, like I said, normally on Monday and Wednesday, I am teaching books of the Bible. Right now I'm in Isaiah for a while. I'm not normally on on Tuesday uh, on my own podcast. I normally am a guest on with Neil, but this was her one year anniversary and she replayed her first show. It was surprisingly good. She was, she was a professional out the gate. I'm pretty happy. Uh, if my first stream was that well done, I would have been ecstatic. Uh, it, my first one was pretty rough. And I'm, in fact, I'm going back and doing... Uh, uh, some re-recordings of those first streams just because I'm not happy with the quality that went out. But me, Neil did a great job. But she, I wasn't on with her today because of that. And I decided since it's my 100th episode, let's do something fun and, and podcast on a day I'm not normally here and take a subject that is is uh, near and dear to my heart and let's just run with it. And I always recommend everybody start their day with... Uh, Miguel Fornia, uh Michael Beatty, uh, on, um, at 5.30 a.m. Pacific time. He does a devotional Monday to Friday um, and, and reads, uh, does worship, Proverbs, and then into some book of the Bible. Today was 2 Peter 2 was excellent. Both, both Peter and Michael were on fire this morning. It was pretty cool. And uh, then, uh, I don't know, we... On Sunday, he's on with his wife, Linda. That's always a lovely uh, couple's program. And then uh, a profit club may be coming sooner rather than later because something happened today that really lit my fire. And, and uh, I was going to put it off till after uh, 
Passover, but um, that may not be the case anymore because, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it, when Bill's broadcast that echo in the old days. Hopefully it's not going on right now, Michael. I got the echo done, but uh, yeah, it had a horrible echo in the, in the beginning and I thought it was always gone and then suddenly it was back again in the last couple of days. So uh, we have that and... Uh, then, like I said, uh, you know, don't forget for entertainment purposes, uh, the memers are are telling the story of our time right now, and Meme TV is uh, Trevor does a good job of putting those together to uh, to bring us a, a little entertainment value and and just let us laugh and and escape the craziness in the world today. Oh, I never shifted that. There you go. There's your Meme TV uh, slide, and then. Uh, with that, I'm going to get right into the study because I have a lot to cover and, and I don't want to be uh, distracted. I, I will say to everybody in uh, the chats on Clout Hub and, and Facebook and, and DLive, hello to everybody. I will get back and read the chats later. I just it, it, It's distracting to me during a uh, teaching program. So uh, just understand I'm not trying to be rude, right? You know, so with that, I decided there's there's a real question because I've had people recently uh, raise issues. Oh, spelling error on slide number one. Okay, there we go. Uh, false doctrines, right? At times when I've defended the truth against heresy, false prophets or false teachers, the people spouting those heresies and false doctrines say that I'm a know-it-all but lack the spirit of love or I'm a heresy hunter or I, um, I'm not spirit-filled or just can't see the truths they are spreading uh, because I, I, I don't have that, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, or I like the Holy Spirit altogether. Um, that these are kind of uh, the, the accusations that come back. And I, I said, but you want to ever deal with a question? What does Scripture say? That's my answer. It's sola scriptura. It's my final word on faith and doctrine. What does scripture say? How did Jesus, John, Peter, and Paul, and Jude deal with the heresy and heretics in their fight for truth? Right? When we fight for truth, does that automatically put us at war with heresy? Or can you be in a stand for truth and not be against heresy? Is that even possible? And um, that's kind of where I'm going to examine today is, is can we do this? And, and should we all be taking the fight for truth and against heresy? And with that, let's just start out with uh, Jesus himself, right? In Matthew 7, 15, he said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly ravenous wolves. What are sheep's metaphor for in the Bible? Christians, right? So they're coming to you like they're Christians, but it says they're only in sheep's clothing. So Jesus right here is questioning whether these false teachers and false prophets are even believers. Right? Watch this. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Okay? They're leading them astray. Sounds like they're not part of the group. Right? And in Mark 7, 6 and 8, he said, And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but in their heart they is far from me. In vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Not scripture, the commandments of men, right? Now, many of these false teachers during the time of Jesus, and I say our time as well, were the religious leaders and teachers of the people. Jesus spoke the harshest words to the scripture in scripture against those people who put themselves up as teachers and, and taught error. Those Pharisees and scribes would have streams today. Understand this. They would have pay-per-view channels or, or whatever going on. This, this is who Jesus spoke against. And it doesn't mean the medium is bad, but you need to watch out for these what's going on here. In Matthew 23, 16 to 17, it says, Woe to you blind guides who say, If anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if he, anyone swears by the gold in the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools. 
for which is greater, the gold of the or the temple that has made the gold sacred. Okay, so here it is. It, it you're seeing a, a content about money, right? And uh, that ought to be a first trigger to you when people start wanting to charge you for their special inside information and their their re revelation from God, and that that's what they're they're putting out charging you for. That's a, that's a, a red flag. And look, Jesus continues, Luke 11, 38 and 39. The Pharisees were astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said, to, and uh, the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup, but, or of the dish, but inside you're full of greed and wickedness. Again, greed, wickedness, right? Matthew 23, 33, you serpents, you brood of vipers, you, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? If they were believers, there's no danger of hell, right? Again, there's a, these people are on the outside. They may look like us, they may speak like us, but out of their mouths comes the doctrine of demons, right? And then, and, um, woe to you, uh, Scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead men's bones. As of all uncleanness, you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Right? This is why sometimes when you get a look behind the curtain in the church, you don't like what you see, because the people have figured out how to hide their sins from the public and advance in the church. But uh, when you get to know them on a personal level, you find out how bad their sin is really going on in their life. And just because I haven't come on this broadcast and exposed people for what they I know is going on in their life, doesn't mean I don't know it. And I don't know that you're a hypocrite and a liar. But you start speaking doctrines of demons like I heard this morning, and, and it's coming, okay? John 8, 44. He tells him, you are of your father the devil. And your will is to do the, your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. So they lie. Okay? These comments to the scribes and Pharisees are harsh, but I want you to notice the similar qualities we have when we see the apostles speak to the false prophets and teachers because you're going to see a common theme go through these slides. Right? All right. If you inherit my voice, I'm a little jacked today over, uh, I, I just shocked by what came out of some person's mouth this morning. And, uh, but Jesus saved his scariest comments for the people who profess to be believers, but are false prophets, false teachers, and antichrist. These people even speak prophecy, do miracles, and exorcisms in his name. Understand that. These false teachers, false prophets, false teachers were able to do fake miracles, right? And remember in Matthew 24, 24, Jesus said that the false prophets would be able to do signs and wonders that would even lead away the elect if that's possible, right? Can't be led away because you're in his hand. But listen to what he says in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Okay? For the people out here doing this and teaching false doctrine and teaching and doing false miracles. And, and uh, spreading uh, demonic lies out of their mouth. Be warned. Jesus warned you. He's going to tell you to depart from him. He never knew you. And uh, I'm giving you a warning if you're listening to me that some of these people are very close to us. Okay? Now what's John say? In 1 John... He says, the Apostle John was living in the city of Ephesus. This is the Temple of Artemis, or Diana if you're Roman, Artemis in Greek, was a central focus, focal point of the city. It's on the high hill. It's the central thing. It was the center of pagan worship practices for that goddess 
And um, he had also dealt with Judaizers who were trying to make people live under the Mosaic law. And then Gnosticism didn't fully develop till the second century, but what you might call proto-Gnosticism or the doctrines that built into Gnosticism were well underway in John's time. And John lived almost to the start of the second century. So they were very well developed in, in that by the time he's writing first, second, and third John. And in first John 1, 18 and 19, he says, children, it is the last hour. And as you know, as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. So now many antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is our last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they are all not of us. Now, John is warning the recipients of this letter that some people who had previously enjoyed fellowship with John, right? But then their true colors were shown and they broke fellowship. And it, and it doesn't say why they broke fellowship, but I have a suspicion that John questioned them about what their teachings were, and they split, they left the scene. When he called them out for teaching error, that they left. And now they're talking nasty stuff about John, and they're doing it, and he's saying, had they ever been of us, they would have stayed with us. So... Um, when you see people that are, are breaking fellowship and getting the smaller, smaller groups of their own volition, they broke the fellowship. They blocked people on, on the internet. They did this stuff to get into a smaller group. That's an indication that they're the ones uncomfortable for being called out for teaching false doctrine. Right? This passage, like I said, it doesn't elaborate on it. That's my speculation. And I try to make it clear when I'm speculating and when it's thus say of the word of the Lord. But I think that's a reasonable speculation, right? Now in 1 John, he continues, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you, right? Doesn't say they're accidentally deceiving you, right? It's they're just innocent and ignorant and they're, and they're deceiving you by accident. They are trying to deceive you. They are being empowered by a spirit that is not the Holy Spirit, and the goal is to deceive you. Make no mistake. Listen to the words of the apostle. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. The devil has been sinning from the beginning. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. I'm going to stop right there real quick. We all sin. We're talking about a practice of sinning, right? For God's seed abides in him, at, um, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. But this is evident who are the children by this. It is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Okay? And this is why I brought up the idea of people being able to hide their sin and in, in, in public. But sometimes it starts coming out. Sometimes they start saying things and in and, and, let you know that they're they're well within their sin, right? And uh, then he continues, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but let test every spirit to see if they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So understand this. He's connecting the false prophets to deceiving spirits, spiritual entities that are empowering the voice of those false prophets. It says, test them. Because just because they're claiming to hear from the Spirit doesn't mean they're hearing from the Holy Spirit. Right? And they're praying in the Spirit doesn't mean it's the Holy Spirit. You got that? This is what John's telling you. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. But this is by this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So John repeats his warning time and again about the deceivers operating within the church body. He's also warning against spirits who are not the Holy Spirit, right? These other spirits are spreading false doctrines. These deceivers, these people who have put themselves up in leadership, who call themselves apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors, and that they're teaching error. John's calling them all out. First Jesus, now John. Okay? 
going to continue on because I just want to show you this is this is a common theme throughout the New Testament, right? In his second letter, it says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourself so that they you may not love. Oh, okay, so that you may not lose what um, we have worked uh, for, but may be, win in full. Okay, so he's telling them, don't get tripped up by these people. They are deceivers, and they are they are in the spirit of Antichrist, right? Uh, and you're going to get full reward. Everyone who goes on goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in has both faith in God and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, the gospel that's in Scripture, if they teach you a, a different gospel, if they teach you things that are not in Scripture, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. I think you can add to that. Do not give him your support. Do not call them friend. For whatever greets whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Right? That's a pretty serious warning to us, right? He's telling them, um, you need to watch out what you're doing. Instead, he gives us clear instructions that would seem to apply to other leaders in the church, not just to uh, these, these false lovers. If they're teaching error, you're not to have anything to do with them. You need to, you need to separate yourself from them. You can reach out and try to co offer correction if they reject it and uh, multiple times. Then it's time to brush your dust off your shoes, sandals, and move on. Because we're not to be uh, contaminated by them. Third letter of John. I've written something to the church, but Diotrephus, Diotrephus, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. So now John's name and names, right? He's calling this Diotrephus, even though I can't pronounce his name, he's calling him out by name, right? If we're going to follow the example of the apostle, then we are to publicly call out the people teaching uh, wicked nonsense against the apostles and the gospel. And the gospel, not add. Thank you. I love how I find my spelling errors as I'm teaching. We are not to oppose them. We are to oppose them and the wicked spirit spirits that inspire their false teaching john calls out some by name right this doesn't end it's not just jesus and john you're going to see this this is everybody in the new testament here's peter in second peter or actually that should say first peter on the top i'll fix that good bill okay oh it is second peter sorry my mistake. I'm correcting my corrections. Okay, so in 2 Peter 1.16, it says, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths, where we made known to you the power of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So watch this. He's comparing that he didn't follow cleverly devised myths, but when he gets the false teachers in just a minute, by implication, he's telling you they are following cleverly devised myths. They're making stuff up out of whole cloth and selling it to the people in the church. Okay? Second Peter 2, 1-3, uh, it says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. The devil doesn't show up in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. Comes in as an angel of light. These people come in and they seem nice, they seem loving, they seem all talking holy terms. And they're bringing in, secretly bringing in destructive heresies, right? Even denying the, the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed, and in their greed, notice greed again, they will exploit you with false words. They're condemnation from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep peter's telling you they're they're not going to get away with this forever right they have and then uh second peter uh, 2 14 and 15 
They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accursed children, forsaking the right way. They have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing. What was Balaam's sin? He was selling a gift of prophecy. Right? He was selling divination. I didn't go back to Micah to uh, give you the passage on there, but that's basically what, what's going on. So Peter's juxtaposing the truth of the gospel with the lies of these false prophets and false teachers. Right? And uh, some of their sensuality is not going to be on public broadcast. But uh, those of us that know a little bit about behind the scenes are well aware of it. Right? So what about Paul? Does Paul have an issue with false prophets? Right? Here we go. Romans 16, 17, 18. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrines you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Notice a common theme. Okay, they cause divisions by teaching doctrines contrary to that which they have been taught. They're teaching doctrines contrary to what the apostles taught, what Jesus taught. Avoid them. They do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Who are they serving? They're serving their father, the devil. Right? And it's saying they deceive the hearts of the naive. That's the other talking about an unstable person. And what it means is that you're not secure enough in your faith. That if you're, if you're new in your faith or haven't developed your faith and, and built it up, it's easily to be swayed by these people because they are very... Uh, oftentimes very charismatic and, and very persuasive, and they sound like they know what they're talking about. And they only misquote scripture a little bit. To just, they twist it a little bit, just like the Passion Translation. Twist it enough to make it not true anymore. Right? 2 Corinthians 11, 12 to 15. And what am I doing I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Okay? False apostles. Disguising themselves as apostles. In Paul's day, they're doing it again in our day. And no wonder, for even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. For it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. What's that mean? They disguise themselves as Christians. They, their end will correspond to their deeds. Second Timothy, this is Paul writing to Timothy. For the time will come when people will not endure sound teaching. What's sound teaching? Sound doctrine. But having itching ears, they will accumulate to themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. Same thing that uh, Peter just did, comparing the truth of the gospel to these myths that they're spreading. Right? We have a common theme going through all these, uh, from Jesus to John to Peter to Paul. Right? And, and they're, they're saying the same thing. They're warning time and time again against, against these false prophets and false teachers. And they wouldn't have had to do it if it wasn't a real issue. Here's Jude, Jude 17 and 19. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time, there will come scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is those who cause divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit, meaning devoid of the Holy Spirit, not devoid of a Spirit, right? And Paul explains that it's the heresies that cause divisions. In 2 Corinthians 11, 12 to 15, it says, First of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it, for there must also be heresies among you, must also be false teaching among you, that they which are uh, proved, they which are approved may be made manifest among you. You know? Now, in several of these quotes, in, I get this, hang on, 
I'm just editing on the, on the fly here. In several of these quotes, we have seen that the ones causing the division are the ones teaching the heresies, standing for truth against heresy, right? And against heresy is not seen as causing a division in scripture. It is those who are deviating from the faith and teaching cleverly devised myths, seeking to draw followers after themselves for gain who are causing a division. It is um, in the electronic world that we're in, where, where we don't have the close relationship with the people in question, their ungodly passions may not be so apparent. See, if you got somebody in your church that's doing sin, even though sometimes they can hide it because you're in the same community and, and you're doing stuff, a lot of times you don't get to see it. But when they can hide behind a computer screen, then they can do all kinds of stuff. But it seems like God exposes them. And out of their mouth comes things that let you know that they're involved in ungodly passions. Right? So, then, in the Acts of the Apostles, right? In Acts 16, 17, and 18, it says, When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. And when, uh, with proconsul Sergius uh, Paulus, a man of intelligence who summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of the Lord, but Elymas, the magician for that was the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the uh, sun for a time. Immediately, a mist of darkness fell upon him and went about um, seeking people to lead him by the hand. So what's Paul calling this guy? Son of the devil, right? Enemy of all righteousness, right? Then in Acts 20, 29, and 30, it says, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, catch this, among from people that go to church with us, among from people that we're calling brothers and sisters in Christ, among from the people who identify themselves as part of the church, among from your own selves will arise men and women speaking twisted things to draw away disciples after them. Right? What's their, uh, their goal here? It is to pull in disciples. And that's why it's a... Uh, this is such a dangerous thing, what's going on here, right? So, I didn't mean to be so preachy today, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm lit. So hopefully you're convinced by Scripture, not by my words, but by Scripture, that we are to stand for truth. By default, that puts us at war with heresy. There is no way to stand for truth without being against heresy. But the goal is to have the truth defended with the hope that the false apostle or false prophet or teacher or the people they deceived will be converted back and, and repent for what they've done and come back to the truth and of the God, the truth, which is Jesus and the gospel. That's my goal. I would love nothing better than when we went after Robin Bullock and what he was teaching. If Robin Bullock went up and repented on TV and denounced all of his false teachings and, and stuff that he was doing, I would I would be praising God that that occurred, okay? Or Sid Roth or any of these other people that were gone after. If anybody I mentioned that's teaching false doctrine or is claiming to be a false a prophet, um, apostle or prophet or that uh, repents, that's the goal in standing for truth and against heresy. But you can't sit back and say nothing, especially if you're going to put yourself out as a teacher of the Word of God you have a duty, an absolute responsibility to stand against these people. You have to stand for truth. And the problem with the church today is there's too many people in putting themselves out as leaders that will not stand for truth. And too many people in, in that have taken those positions that were not called by God. Okay? And they're out for their own ill-gotten gain. And it, this is just disgusting. So... um, 
if that gets me labeled by the critics as a heresy hunter, or they claim that I'm a know-it-all who lacks the spirit or what, whatever, I got to still stand for truth. So be it. It's like, okay, you're a heresy hunter. Okay, now what? What else you got? What other insight you got to throw at me? Sorry. I'm not hunting heresy. I'm trying to protect the flock. And I'm protecting them against people that are out there teaching heresy. In, um, okay. I wasn't sure I was going to do this today. Because I, 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 this is really something. Let me come back in and, and not leave you with just a screen up. Bill. This is this is something that belongs on the Prophet Club. And if she keeps running her mouth like this, she may get her own Prophet Club episode. But this morning, Lisa Perna, professed prophet, professed teacher, got out and said that God revealed to her that Jesus was tempted after his baptism and tempted by the devil because the Holy Spirit was tempting him to find out if he was worthy enough vessel to have the presence of God within him, if he was clean enough. That is not just error. That's blasphemy. You just blasphemed the name of Jesus, lady. You need to step it down, get off the internet, shut down, go back to the cosmetic counter and sell cosmetics because you are not a teacher of the word of God. Okay? You are not. You are, you, and you may have a spirit in you, but I'm telling you right now, I am convinced it's not the Holy Spirit. It is absolute. That, that statement out of your mouth this morning came from the pit of hell. And it came out of your mouth. Okay, you time to step down. And I know Lisa doesn't watch anymore. She won't take it even know when we met. She said I could speak into her life uh, when I did uh, to cut off that conversation. But this, I'm just telling you right now, many of you people know her. When I first got on the air, I was even promoting her because I thought uh, she's a nice person. And I thought we disagreed on some uh, spiritual, uh, you know, labels. Like I didn't believe apostles and prophets are, are for the church today. But this is the doctrine of demons. Doctrine of demons came out of her mouth today. She blasphemed the name of Jesus. And not only her understanding, there was more error. She's into a kenotic theology, which is that Jesus has to do with Jesus not being fully God until the baptism. It was just, it was horrific number of errors. But when she got to the fact that the Holy Spirit was tempting Jesus to see if he, God incarnate, to see if God incarnate was a worthy enough vessel for the Holy Spirit, but she claims to be have the Holy Spirit in her. That means she is uh what equal to Jesus or greater? Are you kidding me? Get it get your mouth off the internet, lady. You 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 have no business teaching anybody because you can't exegete a passage of scripture on a bet. Okay? Sorry. I don't normally name names except for when we're in the Prophet Club and we lay down the thing. I'm just telling you right now, and I will post the video probably on Facebook. I, I didn't have it ready for the show, but I'm just telling you right now, that is that is blasphemy. That's not even a little bit of heresy. That that's you're you're at center circle kind of stuff. Okay? You're in you're further outside the circle than the Jehovah Witness and the Mormons. You are out there in cult land. Okay? And I just seen Michael said he'll post it after. He's got the clip. But um, it, it's a, uh, you know, this, this breaks my heart. I really liked Lisa when I met her. But she got no business teaching anybody. And nobody that listens to me, if you, you look at the scriptures I gave you and you tell me whether you can still support that. That is not godly. That's not, that. that's devil. The devil spoke that through her mouth today. Okay? So, uh, I don't usually get on these rants, but uh, this, this ticks me off. Let me play a song. I'm going to try to calm down, and then I'll read the chat, and I will uh, I'll come back, and uh, we'll see if we get any questions or, or what's going on. But I'm going to need more than a, a little bit of time I may play Psalm 51. I need a little longer song to to just breathe it back in. Make it
right, I'll turn the mic on. Now I'm back. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't trying to give Lisa advertisement so people can go listen. Uh, Michael pulled a couple of clips. You can check on uh, um, McAlifornia's, uh, what do you call it, Telegram channel. He, yeah, I'm sure he'll put them up there. We'll get them on Facebook. We'll get them out so you don't have to listen to that much nonsense or nail scratching. But understand, I don't make these accusations if I can't prove it. If I don't have video, I don't have somebody in writing, um, I'm going to deal with a, a couple other ministries on Friday because uh, this heresy theme and, and people teaching error is just it's going to be the theme of the week. But uh, I, I don't do that unless I can give you the, the page reference, book and page reference, or provide the videotape to do this. I guarantee you those that doctrine of demons came out of her mouth. The, the tasting her pudding comment seemed overtly sexual, but it was based in the uh, uh, the proofs in the pudding, and you can taste my pudding anytime. It just it, it came across wrong. It may not have been intended that way, but it it just gave me the willies when it came out. But this was not something that could be misunderstood. When you say the Holy Spirit is testing Jesus to find out if he was a worthy enough, a clean enough vessel to have the presence of God within him, you either don't understand that he is God incarnate, right, or whatever. It's just a uh, there. But yeah, Remsford, it, it it probably gonna have to be an episode. There there's been enough statements over the last couple months that have come out of Lisa's mouth that that you know we've been going. Did we do one there? You know, I'm I don't want to be a uh, a respecter of persons and just because somebody was a friend, I'm not gonna show give them any benefit of the doubt. But it is uh, is horrible. But what came out of her mouth, it was a it, it was a demon speaking, in my opinion. No Christian could utter those words. I don't believe in 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 believe them. I'm uttering them because I'm repeating them for you. But it was a uh, it was absolutely disgusting and turned my stomach to hear somebody speak about the Lord Jesus Christ that way. That was so blasphemous. It was insane. Okay, so um, I have been trying to be polite and like i said i still have not shared stuff that i know behind the scenes and i don't think that's appropriate but you know when i tell you that some people are have uh are chasing their essential pleasures understand i'm i'm not just making that up okay there there's some uh stuff that is uh not out there in, in the face that is problematic but it's the doctrine i try to address with people not their personal lives but their doctrine and the doctrine that came out of her mouth today was the doctrine of demons. And, and nobody should be listening to that. Not one person should be listening. And now uh, we'll, we'll take the excerpts out so you don't have to listen to the rest of her nonsense. Right. And uh, so I thank everybody that, that congratulated me on my uh, 100th episode. And I, I never expected to be here. What's funny is I have all tons of writing that I've done over the years. And, um, uh, I didn't think I could had enough for a hundred episodes. My wife goes, you got probably enough for a hundred years, you know, that you could keep going. And, um, uh, but when I started, I was really nervous that I wouldn't have enough to talk about. And, uh, so getting to a hundred episodes is, is a big deal for me. And the fact that I can't find enough time to do as many episodes as I think I need to do right now, that it's, uh, it, it would a blessing to to be completely free from any church to teach on any subject to let um scripture interpret ter scripture instead of having to let worry about if the pastor is going to teach something different than what scripture is going to teach if i have to stay you know and, and be afraid of upsetting them with what i teach i just put the word out there and the words what it is and you like it or don't like it, but the word is what it what it is. And you interpret clear passages at first. And unclear passages get interpreted through uh, clear passages. Typologies get interpreted through actual instructions in a word. That you There's ways to understand scripture. Um, and that that's what we're doing. And I'm trying to teach people. And I think if you listen long enough, you're going to find out that you have a greater understanding of the word and a love for the word of God, that we love the living word in Jesus 
and the written word and that they they come out together and that i'm uh you know you know yeah ginger goddess thank you that you're learning about the bible in a way you've never experienced before that's i i've heard that for years and and i'm, I'm not blowing up my own ego i just i know god's given me that gift to basically bring the bible to life for people and that's what i want to do for you but there are so many people out here snake oil salesmen grifters people teaching heresy that uh, should never have um, got any followers on their platform that have some of them tens of thousands of followers. Lisa's not that kind of number, right? She's a, a smaller fish in the, in the, in the sea, but they're, they're teaching absolute heresy and we need to call them out and to, to stand for truth. And when you stand for truth, you are going to be against error. It's just the default position. You cannot be for truth and not be against error. You can't be for truth and not be against lies, right? So that's where we're at. So I was uh, just a, uh, you know, like I said, I, I really appreciate everybody that tuned in on, on my un, not normally scheduled Tuesday and to uh, put it out there uh, to try to teach you what the word says about these false prophets. Every New Testament writer warned us about them. God's repeatables. When God repeats something two, three, five, fifty times, time to listen. These false prophets, false apostles, and false teachers are a threat to you and me. And we need to stand against them. And we stand up to them with the word of the Lord. How did Jesus defeat the lies Satan was doing, his scripture twisting? Because that's what Satan was quoting, or actually misquoting scripture. And Jesus took the scripture and put it back in a true context and answered back, right? He beat them with the word of God. And that's how you beat these false prophets, with the word of God. And that's why everything I do, I, I give you the scripture references to prove what I'm saying. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land this plane and um, end this. And may God bless everybody that showed up here and, and listened to what turned into a rant that was supposed to be a teaching. But um, they definitely, uh, uh, the rant was well earned, in my opinion. So God bless you all. And I hope to see you tomorrow morning at 530 with uh, Michael. And then uh, at noon tomorrow, we'll be back in Isaiah 19. It's another short but hard chapter, right? You know, thank you. Thank you.